Machine State Versi Group going to Ithaca. E one Sierra Bar today, our flight time is 51 minutes. We do expect a few bumps on the climb out and uh, on the arrival into Ithaca. Once again, welcome on board. Hey man, you got fishing gear in it? More of like a barn, I'd say. Corners are pretty deep. Looks a lot older. A little bit more rickety than mine, but it's gonna be a fun atmosphere to play in, that's for sure. Wooden benches. We'll see how it goes this weekend, but I'm expecting big things out of us, so we'll see how it goes. They got ice. Who is staying in front? Hang around. Hey! Come on! <laughs> Game day tomorrow, baby. Let's go. Um, just enjoying a nice steak with my teammates. I'm getting fed by food. Just feed everyone all your food. Having a really nice night here. <laughs> Dude, you're gonna numb that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry I had a mouthful there. Cause is feeding me. Make sure I'm ready for tomorrow. I'll get my carbohydrates in. <laughs> The Panaszu name originated from Poland. Uh, my parents both came here when they were both 18. They actually met here when they were 18. I think it was at a wedding, like a... Yeah, it was both their best friend's wedding. So my dad was actually watching the videotape after the wedding and my mom was on the video and then my dad told my uncle, you know, oh, pause it, pause it, pause it. Who was that, who was that, who was that? And that's kind of how it all started. You know, I came out first. And Jacob came into the picture, and then we have a third brother, Patrick. So, you know, it was kind of cool when how they came over to the states and you know, tried having that American, you know, family dream, and we've been kind of living it. So it's been pretty cool. In the summer every year, we visit Poland when we were little a lot. So I just think going there every summer really played a big role on like how we, how they raised us and how we grew up when we were little. Yeah, and if you think about it, I mean, I used to go every two months when I was younger. I would just go there for two months, my summer vacation just spent there. So if you think about it, you know, I think I counted like a year and a half of my life I've been living in Poland with my you know, family that lives over there, which is pretty cool. I think we kind of learned Polish first just because we were always at home, but then, you know, our parents kind of just put us put us in the school, you know, English school. We kind of learn over time how to speak English, so. So like when we would go to Poland for like the summer sometimes, we'd come back and like we'd forget how to say like simple words. Like I remember one time one of my friends came over and I forgot how to say grandpa. And I was like, oh, we're going to my grandpa's house, but I didn't know how to say it. So I just like tried to figure out a way how to tell him. <laughs> it, was, it was really funny, but it's, it's unique just getting both sides of it. Being able to speak a different language is also another cool thing because, you know, me and him can be talking, we can be talking, you know, some smack about you or, you know, talking something good or, you know, what we're going to eat later or something like that. So, I mean, it's always pretty cool just like we do it on the field. So, I mean, it's pretty cool being Polish and, you know, being from a little, a little different than, I guess, majority of the people. Yeah, I think just the whole aspect of being able to speak Polish is is like the big part of it, just being able to like talk to my parents in Polish and just mic in Polish whenever I want. It just, it's a pretty cool thing. Uh, I started playing when I was in third grade. Well, we both started playing when we were, yeah, well, he was in third grade, I was in, third I was in fourth grade. grade, but I was a little too heavy. So I stopped playing because I would have to run in like a sweatsuit. The coach would make me run in like a sweatsuit because I had to like lose weight. 
and he was just naturally bigger, so he just played with the upper class. We actually played with like kids that were like two years older than us, so he was fat too. Growing up, we like hated each other. Like we did not like each other. Not at all. Bit. There was blood. Oh, there was, yeah. So like once, once my freshman year hit, I like kind of played not wanting to play football anymore, and he kept on playing. And then I just stuck stuck with him. And then my sophomore year came, and then we just became like best friends. Like that bond, like finally clicked. Like I know a lot of people say, like eventually you'll like realize later on that like how much how much like he means to you. And I was like, yeah, I know, but I didn't like believe it. And then my sophomore year finally hit me, and like we just became best friends, did everything together, had the same friends, and just overall just built like a really strong bond in high school. And I feel like football definitely helped with that because I mean. I mean, you can think of it, if we didn't have football, we could potentially still be, you know, beating the hell out of each other. So I really think football did because we had a connection. We are able to talk about a lot of things. Everyone calls each other their brother, you know, in the locker room, but actually being blood related to someone just means so much more. And you're able to connect with that person so much more because they, you know, they're from the same background as you. They go through the same things as you. They know so much about you. So you can always go to that person, talk to that person and, you know, have that connection. And good evening, everyone. Welcome live inside Liner Rink in Ithaca, New York, for the Big Ten visitors, the Michigan State Spartans, and they come in one and one. And just the eighth all-time meeting between these two teams. And we are underway. Cornell in their familiar home whites. Tipped away by Saliba. He is all by himself coming down the left wing into the zone. Saliba, yeah. he shoots, scores! Sam Saliba, shorthanded, gives the Spartans the lead. Lewandowski and Sasana. Sasana gets a nice pass shot. Goal! Cornell with the interception. Hiroshi takes it back of the blue line. Drives down yes! to the base of the left circle and a goal for Michigan State. Taro Hiroshi puts one in. A little wrister from the base of the circle. Three to one, Spartan. Stevens between the circles. Oh! A goal for Michigan State. Brody Stevens goes upstairs and the Spartans lead it four to one. Rossi drives down to the top of the circle, dishes left of the net, yes, and it's tipped in. <laughs> Michigan State scores. Cody Milan. The final horn will sound. The Spartans have knocked off number eight in the nation, Cornell, here in Ithaca this evening. The final score: Michigan State five, Cornell two. They're going to be better again tomorrow night. We're going to be better. So let's take care of ourselves now. Hey, great job. Everybody keep sticking together. And uh, I'd say that's, a, that's a real big win for a great job. That's our virtual reality goggles. And you put them on, you can't see anything. There's just a bunch of pucks moving around, and they light up. And you got to see, you got to follow the pucks. It's helping your peripherals. and. Uh, just your overall vision. You know, there's a defender coming from behind you. You know, it helps, uh, you know, your decision making. We keep score of who's in the lead. Right now, Camer's in the lead, so everyone's <laughs> gunning for him. Yeah. I'm coming for you, Camps. Yeah, I'm coming for you. <laughs> the crowd cheers. If you get it wrong, they're gonna boo you. So yeah, you get all... there's a lot of pressure. It starts off really <laughs> slow, and then it gets so fast. Oh boy. <laughs> Nap time. <laughs> what? Smith. All right, boys. You came here to get two dubs, huh? Let's finish up the job and have a nice plane ride home. Go green on three. One, two, three. Go green. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the James Lina Skating Rink on the campus of Cornell University as we get ready for Spartan Hockey Round 2, Michigan State versus Cornell. After you win on a Friday night, it is always more difficult, so we've got to take that lesson and transfer it here and be prepared right from the drop of the puck. And we are ready to get underway here at Lina Rink. I'll tell you what, I think Michigan State has more energy right now. Into the oh. middle, shot and a save by Lethaman. Wow. The 
shot here from a steep angle, and Patrick Kordorenko puts it top shelf across the body of Goleida and over his hand. Lambden got it up top to Osborne. Osborne throws from there, loose, and yes. shot in the goal for Michigan State. Logan Lambden got the rebound and pushed it past Goleida. The Spartans in the lead. Now starting it in front of the MSU bench, in. And now we start to see a little bit more confidence. Quick shot, and a goal! Mitchell Lewandowski rifling it home from the right face-off dot. And just as you felt that wave coming in that top line out there, they proved lethal. Rossi picks it up. Hiroshi down the left wing. Yes! Tight shot. Goal for Michigan State. <laughs> Taro Hiroshi pulled the trigger. And for the second night in a row, Michigan State chases Matthew Goleida out of the net. Trying to bring it out. They do. Barron through the neutral zone. Dishes off to Vanderlaan. His shot save made. John Letheman. And this one is over. The final score. Michigan State 4. Cornell three, the Spartans with the sweep on the road against the number eight team in the nation. wanted him to come because it'd be cool you know if he got the opportunity to come to the same school as me you know and I would I would always want you know having someone from back at home with me from such a far distance like Michigan State from to Illinois but I didn't think he was gonna come he surprised me when he committed it was crazy when I was like my freshman year like I said like I hated him still and I told myself when he got his first offer if I ever get a scholarship I'm gonna go to the opposite side of the United States of him. I like thought I was just gonna go to the complete opposite way of him. Yeah, right. And my sophomore year came and then I was like, okay, like this would be easier on our family, easier on my parents. And then when Michigan State offered me, like I knew right away that I was probably gonna go there from from what he was telling me, like all the all the stuff about this school and just in general, and my parents really wanted me to follow him. It was crazy, you know, it kind of I had that one year off of from not playing with him and it kind of made me realize how much cooler it was looking down the line and you know being able to see your brother or someone who you can talk to in a different language to try to confuse the O-line, you know, the offense. So it was it was pretty cool seeing him down the line and what we were able to do and accomplish out on that field. Well, the communication can be with them. They can speak Polish. Uh, number one, but as far as the involving them, you you know, you, you know their brothers, but uh, he treats them like a teammate. Uh, uh, I think the effect of other kids, you know, the Bullers being here, uh, the Dowels, I think they're a big part of the calming effect because we've also dealt with, you know, siblings, and uh, I think it's a pleasure. And, and it is special to be able to have guys like that, Jacob and Mike, uh, be on the team, and specifically side by side. And that's been a pleasure too, seeing them play and make plays together. The best part about it was like the first big play I made was against Western Michigan. It was like a TFL for like nine yards, and I get up and I start running the sideline. The first person that's right there, like congratulating me on my first big play is him, and it's just that feeling is just. You can't explain it. It's just amazing. And your colleague, you All-American Darwin Thompson, in at running back, but there's a lot of pressure on Jordan Love. Hit as he throws. It's picked off. Yeah, that all started because of the tackle defensive end twist and Jacob Ponishuk. So my thought process was they were running a fast offense, and I was tired. And I was just breathing heavy, and he looks at me and he goes, Duja, Duja. And that means big, big. That means he's going first, and it's one of our plays. 
and he just calls it and I just look at him and I was like, that is not the play that was called right now. Like, I'm not running that. We haven't done that yet all like last season. He just looks at me and he goes, run it. And I was like, okay. And we just ran the play and it turned out being, being a huge play that led to a pick. Yeah, no, I mean, having that confidence, you know, luckily for me, he has that confidence in me, you know, as an older brother that, you know, if I'm gonna say something, then, you know, I probably should do it or else, you know, he's gonna get the consequence later. <laughs> but now that you told them, our secret words, now people are gonna words. know. We now we gotta change words. it up a yeah, little we, bit. We got different words we can use. For the tie, no good, blocked. Mike Potashuk looks like he might have got it. We just all feel like family around here and especially having people that are on the team that actually are blood related to you just makes everyone else just so much closer. Me and him play for like, when we go out, it's like playing for each other. That's how Byron, Riley, and Max were. They just know that like, even if they're gone, like Byron still is like playing with that name on his back, like his last name, he's playing for them. If you're not playing like that brother bond that we have on our team, how we call each other brothers, it's like you're actually playing for your brothers or your family, like you're representing your last name. You know, for a majority of the people that, you know, gone through Michigan State and all the families and stuff like that, you know, everyone hardworking, you know, always doing the right thing. And that's why Coach D always emphasizes, you know, it's the people about Michigan State that make it great. I mean, I call my mom every single day. I'm always grateful for her and my dad and everything that they have done for us, you know, sacrificed for us. I mean, there's, there's a lot of stories that, you know, how, like how they came over here and stuff like that and all that good stuff. And everything that they sacrificed for us, it's just, it just blows my mind away because I don't even know if I would have been able to do that, especially not even knowing the language that's spoken there because when they came here, they didn't even know a single bit of English. So that's just, it's just scary for me. So I'm always grateful for them every single day. If they didn't make that leap and like take that risk of coming here and trying to find a job out here, then like we wouldn't even be alive. They would have never met. And just in general, them taking like the steps that they did to come here just made our lives a lot easier with them taking that risk, but just we're grateful for them every single day. Hello everybody from College Park, Maryland. It's the Spartans and the Terrapins of the University of Maryland in a game that could make Michigan State Bowl eligible. Yeah, you know, you want to definitely get out to a fast start against a team that's playing uh, with, with raw and high emotions, both looking to get bowl eligible today in Michigan State, looking to get that 700th victory in the program's history. And uh, it's going to be an exciting one, George. Takes the snap, hands to Connor Hayward, running off left tackle. Connor Hayward with a good jolt ahead. Lewerke is going to take a shot downfield. And that is caught. It's Cody White. Rosenthal offsets the eye left in front of Connor Hayward. They'll hand it off to Connor running off right tackle. Got a block. He's at the 10. He's at the 5. Heads for the right pylon. Into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU. Two consecutive plays where this offensive line has dominated, had key blocks. And now you find these Michigan State Spartans with a spark in their first series. Snap back to Hill. It's a bad snap. Goes back to get it, and he's going to be snowed under. Back around the five-yard line. Can't make a mistake against this Michigan State defense. They are too good. And Lewerke hands it off. No, he'll keep it. He had everybody fooled. Lewerke pushed out of bounds inside the 20-yard line. The snap back, the put down, the kick is up, and the kick is good. Matt Coglin now 12 of 13 on the season. 10-0 on the road. It's been a pretty good start for Mark D'Antonio. Takes the snap. Running to his right is Fleet Davis, and he is hit for a loss. About a half a yard by Andrew Dowell. Beat back his Fleet Davis. Hand off to Davis. Tripped up in the backfield. Nice play by Naquan Jones. You've got to find some type of rhythm if you're Maryland right now offensively. Maryland's rushing offense, which is one of the best in the country. Only five yards today. Yeah, you can have a great rushing offense, but Michigan State is the best run defense in the country. Spartans 10, Maryland 3. Run up by Petrino. End over end. Connor Hayward from the one. Now 
out, angling to his right across the 10, the 15, the 20, the 25. Now at the 30, he's at the 40-yard line, stiff arms a man out of the way, and finally can't stay in bounds in the neighborhood of midfield. Spartans bring pressure. Hale is set. Taken down by Brandon Boyer Randall. Now Michigan State offensively to put a drive together here, George, put some points up. Lewerke has an open receiver. Sowards near side. Brings it in. Give him 12. Hand off to Connor Hayward. He tries left oh. guard and this time doesn't get much and then squirts away. He fights his way toward the goal line and that's a touchdown. So it could be a Max Rosenthal touchdown. Whatever it's a Spartan touchdown and it's 16 to 3. And Michigan State right now handily controlling this game. Kasim Hill under center. Play fakes to McFarland. Hill's in trouble and down he goes. The Spartans get their third sack. And Leak lost the football. Michigan State has it. Wow. You want to know why he's one of the best linebackers in the country, one of the best in the Big Ten? The awareness. This kid makes plays. Game swinging plays. Joe Bocci coming up big for the Spartans. First and 10 Spartans at the 20-yard line. Connor Hayward, the running back, takes the handoff. Bolts Outrun. up the middle. He has running room. He's at midfield. Angles to his left at the 30. He's at the 20, the 10, the 5, into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU. Connor Hayward just took it to the house from 80 yards away. Spartan defense. Stingy. That was <laughs> impenetrable today. Yeah. And Looking Michigan State with its 700th win in school history, 24 to 3, the final. Fight, 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 fight,